Apple ID number. If you just punch in the number uh, 90342 and hit search, it pulls up Eucadia um, intro call. And it, when you click on that uh, line there right next to the, the um, icon, it takes you to the call itself and the archived recording that it lets you either listen straight from your computer right then or it allows you to download. Um, the, but you have maybe, to be a member. No, you don't have to be a member. Anybody no. can go to those. For for any talks you call, if you, ha if you were wanting to get information or be able to re-listen to calls, you can do that. When you have the call ID number, you can do that. Okay, so, thanks. So that's sure. the only number you need, sure. 90342 is the number for this call, and you can go over there and download it uh, okay. as soon as those are there. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much, it, sir. You're welcome. Terry, All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to also mention uh, of uh, Eucadia dot, or sorry, it's university dot Eucadia mm -hmm. dot info. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. you can go there for the MP3 downloads. They will be smaller file size. University dot Eucadia dot, Eucadia dot Info. Dot info. Yes. And anyone can go over there and do downloads. And just for your information, they are also smaller. Uh, they're, they're, you may you might like those, but a little bit better. They take up less storage space. <laughs> Great. Thanks, sir. Yep. You're welcome. Uh, Southwest Michigan. Did you still have another question? All right, do we have any other questions? Uh, guest uh, yeah. 40. Yeah, go ahead. Um, wow. Uh, well, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. <laughs> uh, Frank, it's, my name is Ryan. It's, it's great to, uh, hey, be exposed to all this. And, um, I actually, we, uh, we spoke once before in another call when you used the uh, gladiator movie metaphor. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember? Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, so so you're basically one man, you know, kind of standing up against the entire empire and all that. Yeah. Um. I uh. I've been uh. A, a lot of this, you know, just the very basic and deep essence of this stuff is are things that I've always been aware of ever since, ever since I was very young, um, even though I don't really have, well, I guess might as well go ahead and say the, the familial connections uh, in the same sense that, that some do. Um, so I wasn't really, you know, exposed in that way, but it was just, just picking up on things around me, kind of a feeling. And so I've always, uh, you know, been you know, Mr. Conspiracy buff and all that stuff and all that. And um, I'm not, I know many people who can say the same, um, probably some of the people on this call. Um, but uh, it's interesting you were talking about, you know, the things that, that lead us into these things. And uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail about that at this particular uh, moment in time in my life, but um, suffice to say, I've been exposed uh, to what seems to be actual hard proof now that there is a matrix. It really is true. There really are. Uh, I was having a debate recently with uh, somebody about malevolent and benevolent forces, and they were they believe that there are only malevolent forces and no benevolent forces out there. So we started joking around and saying the mouths and the bends. And he was yeah. like, there's no bends, there's no bends. And we recently, you know, he re last time we spoke yesterday, he actually was acknowledging the bends, so I feel like I'm having a good effect. So, like, in a sense, um, in a, you know, I don't know, personal, spiritual mission, whatever, like, I know why I'm here kind of sense. I've, I've always done my best to know as much as I could possibly know to kind of play the, the Morpheus role, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and um, so that's that's always been a huge element of who I am. And uh, there's, uh, 
a lot of when you do that, you know, it's easily, you know, especially here in America, it's extremely easy for that to be like, oh, okay, well, that's just, you know, I'd have to see proof of that before I believe it and all that. And I guess maybe it's probably like that everywhere, but I can only speak for... Ryan, let me, did you, Ryan, let, did you have a question real quick? I'm sorry, Frank. Yes, I do. No, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I um, <laughs> is when people ask for proof, like, is there a way that I can actually find a way to prove and say here? Because I kind of want, like, you know, to, to you know, use the the matrix metaphor again, like a red pill to be able to hand to somebody, and if I could put hand them pieces of paper and documents. That proved there is. There, that there, we were there is. that the United States is under Vatican canon law, then yep. it would seem like that process would be a lot easier for me. Okay, and I, I was, <clears throat> I'm glad you asked that question because when I said I just wanted to inter- interrupt, um, my answer is actually going to be the same answer as I was going to interrupt. So I think we tuned in. Here's here's Excellent. the simple answer. Okay, the simple answer if we use the matrix metaphor is that. It was only when Neo was able to defy what seemed to be the rules of the matrix that it became apparent that it was a matrix. In other words, he flew walls. This was never uh, an element in in the story because ultimately everyone who was asleep was pretty much written off. But you could have imagined the consciousness of of people if they if they had explored this angle in the story of watching Neo fly into the air and they're just basically in a drone-like state to see someone fly off. So the the point, if I come back to you, back to to this, the strongest proof will always be the presence of a hero in demonstrating the uh, power that is presented through knowledge. In other words, you can put in front of people every smoking gun you like and when people are trapped, they won't react. And and it is as frustrating as hell, as I'm sure a lot of people would would find, that when people are uh, seemingly shut down, it doesn't matter that you can say, look at this show. There's a classic clip of of Alan Greenspan um, not too long ago basically saying that the whole thing is a lie in in not too many words. But you know how many people, and it was actually in front of some congressional hearing or something, he made some disparaging remark. And and he was actually questioned by one of the senators, I think it was, and uh, it it moved on. Do you know how many people really gave a damn about that clip? Very few. But having said that, in the presence of a hero, one who walks into the court and helps their fellow for nothing other than to, to overcome injustice or one who, who, who helps someone who's mental or someone who is unlawfully uh, imprisoned. When we see a hero, things change. So I would say to you, out of all of this, unfortunately I... Uh, I'm, I'm not the person that can really give you any proof. I can give you tools, but the best proof of all is when people see heroes. And they're going to see heroes if people become competent and, and, and stop basically just taking pieces and in desperation firing them off without thinking about them. So I hope that answers your question. It may not be the answer you wanted, Ryan, but it is the honest answer, Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Ryan, if you do have another question, um, you, if you'll star eight and get yourself back in the queue, that would be great. Uh, we have uh, Nihil, just unmuted. Do you have a question? Hi, Frank. This is uh, Greg up in Idaho. Hi, Greg. Hi. Greg. Hi. I, uh, I wasn't going to jump in, but I wanted to share something in light of the earlier comments about the Ten Commandments. I uh, was stopped in Montana by a Highway Patrol officer um, earlier this year in April, and um, when she came to the side of the car, I, I asked her if I'd run over anybody and killed somebody or injured anybody or broke or destroyed any property. And she had such a stunned look on her face, I followed up with, um, 
Well, I just wanted to make sure I didn't violate the law that I'm obligated to, which is the golden rule. And so I quoted her, uh, Matthew 7, 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you desire that men should do to you, so also you should do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And I proceeded to explain to her that the uh, highest law was summed up by Jesus there in the Sermon on the Mount that um, was the highest law as, as seen all over the world and all over the universe. And uh, that it would be, I asked her, I said, do you think it's possible for me to know all the codes and statutes and policies that you um, are practicing here in Montana? <laughs> throughout the and, uh, and this total shock yeah. look on her face. And, and so then I proceeded to um, let her know that we there was no contracts that existed between myself and her or any of her, uh, you know, since she's an agent for something else, for the principles, that there was no contract that would obligate mm-hmm. me to them. And so... Um, they're an expired, uh, um, sorry about that, expired driver's license and, um, and a registration that was unsigned. And I explained to her that the, in Idaho, the um, registration that's unsigned, it means that I've not agreed to the requirements for insurance because it's signed, which means there is no contract. And, um, yep. and so, I, so she, she was, had this perplexed look on her face. And so she goes back to her cruiser, brand new uh, Dodge Charger, and she comes back about 15 minutes later with three pieces of paper. And the first yep. one was what she supposedly stopped me for, which was for speeding, which was a warning. And she'd written two citations for uh, no driver's license and no insurance. But uh, in Montana, they collect money on the side of the road. And I, she, she right. says to me, right. she hands me the paper, she says, but I'm not collecting any money from you. <laughs> right. So the irony about this is what I'm saying is, is that it, it's it's – the, the, the ticket never went to warrant. I sent the tickets back to them. I, was, I did not know about you in April, and I did not know yeah. about the rest yeah. of the teaching, but I sent the tickets back, and uh, they've never put a warrant up for my arrest. I've checked the NCIC computer systems from some other people, and um, it just had me listed as a straw man argument. But my, my point yeah. is, though, the, the golden rule, I, I just want to ask you, my question is, is, isn't the golden rule the highest law in the universe, that um, above that there is nothing else? Um, I would have to say that the golden rule uh, is pretty close to being the key. But the, the problem with the golden rule uh, is the deeper understanding of what it represents. Yeah. See, not a perfection. I mean, people talk about the golden rule. They're talking about, I'm not going to kill you because you're not supposed to kill me. It's almost like the sort of neutral aspect of it, right? But there is that deeper aspect to it. And the deeper aspect to it of the golden rule is what am I? What are you? What are we? Yeah? So by that I mean if you look at the opening line of of the ecclesiastical deed poll, the first words it says, are we the divine immortal spirit? And if we go back to... uh, (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm laughing because tonight I've said, you know, the last vestige of people, you know, talking about scripture, but... I am going to quote an element. I'm not going to quote it word for word. I'm going to quote the, the element being uh, the key lesson. The, the, the story or the knowledge of I'm in you, you're in me, that we are all part of the, the, bigger, the bigger consciousness. So um, that in itself is also part of the deeper mystery of that statement. So it's probably no mystery that the golden rule is about the only thing that they've found that is a thread throughout every single religion on the planet. So it's a long answer when I should have simply said to you, yes, but yes, because is what I mean. Yeah? Well, the reason I, I think it's so significant, I, I, I started doing a study on the Sermon on the Mount, starting with the Beatitudes, yeah. and they've always troubled me since I quit seminary back in the mid-'80s. Yeah. And, um, and so I went through and I finally realized that the whole concept of the Roman Catholic Church that has been implemented throughout our world is this concept of original sin. And when I looked mm-hmm. at that, the Beatitudes, these nine beautiful sayings of profound depth, I realized that they matched up with Christ when he said, uh, Suffer not the little children to come unto me. It's better you have a millstone tied around your neck and be cast into the sea and drowned than to cause one of the least of these little ones to stumble. And then also, unless you come to the kingdom as a little child, you can in no wise enter. He's talking Mm. about innocence. It's all about innocence. And the innocence of, of doing everything out of love. And I think that the, what I discovered was, was that we were born with innocence. And as soon as we get here, society, as it's been taken over by this Roman cult and all of its other factions, 
has done everything he can to bind us under some kind of rules and regulations or doctrines in order yep. to stop us from actually acknowledging who we are sure. as the 